regard to selecting specific ingredients, we have both the decision around which ingredients to use and then which forms of those ingredients, what the purity and potency criteria we have are, manufacturing criteria, uh, dosage, right, that all of these things come in. So the first part of, of which forms we use comes from the system design process of what pathways we're wanting to affect and then what forms are going to be most meaningful for affecting that per particular pathway. So for instance, if we're looking at B6's role in trans tr transferring amino acids into neurotransmitters specifically for dopamine, for serotonin, for number of monoamines, uh, it's, a, it's specifically the phosphorylated version of B6, P5P, that is involved in that particular process. So if we use different form of B6, we use paradoxine hydrochloride, which have, you know, which is uh, an ingredient in, in many nootropics and other supplements, it has to get phosphorylated, which might be a rate limiting factor in people, especially based on genetic predispositions before it can serve that particular function. It's also going to take longer for it to get in that place to serve that function. So using where we're going to use a methylated form or a phosphorylated form or uh, a, a specific kind of choline donor over another one. All of all of those are kind of key considerations to the design process. Then the next step is how we actually do sourcing and dosage on that. Dosage is uh, also nuanced because, for instance, in qualia, there are multiple different choline donors. You have you have uh, citicoline and alpha GPC and centrophenoxy and uridine, which all affect the uh, kind of choline aromatic process. And so we're using less of any of those than you would use if you were stacking them by themselves. But we have to think about what particular parts of the nervous system they're going to be targeting, how long does it take for them to get there, uh, what's going to give consistent effect over duration of time. And so we're looking at the dosage of each thing in light of all those things. And it's not just choline donors, it's if you're adding an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. So less acetylcholine in the presynaptic neuron is actually going to get across to the postsynaptic neuron. You need less of the entire molecule of acetylcholine in the front side. So uh, sometimes our doses look higher than normal, sometimes they look lower than normal of individual ingredients, but that's based on systemic design. So if we ever change the dose of one thing, we usually have to reformulate the whole thing.